I want to just really drive home the point that I'm going to miss Ruth. Dave Palumbo here with an RX Muscle news update. Ruth Silverman, the former senior editor of Iron Man Magazine, editor online of digitalmuscle.com, and former regular on The Fitness View, a show that we hosted on RX Muscle for a number of years, uh, has passed. She's also what I would consider a good friend in this industry to me. She always has been, as long as I know her. I met her back in, I believe it was 1992, right, right around that time frame. And she had come up to me and introduced herself. I think I had just done some show and, and won something. And she let me know she was a, you know, an editor of Iron Man Magazine. And she wanted to ask me a couple of questions. And she was just nice and sweet as butter. I could tell right off the bat she had a really good sense of humor and you know I was you know, I'm a sarcastic guy myself and we were busting each other's chops right from the beginning as if we knew each other for like 25 years like she just came from similar stock to me I don't know and uh, we kind of got each other's jokes and you know being half Jewish myself and she was Jewish and we would I would hit her with a few Yiddish expressions that I know my grandmother would say once in a while and she would crack up and uh, we always we always had very, very good conversation, whether we were debating something regarding bodybuilding or we were just talking about life or some of the ridiculousness that we see in our industry. Ruth Silverman called it like she saw it. Miss Olympia now, she ties Linda Murray's record. Ruth, uh, was it even a contest? Not for me, man. The minute Iris came out, it was lights out, game over. And you'd look at her and you'd never even believe that she was like, someone who would be an expert in the bodybuilding industry because she just didn't look the part. But she worked out and she loved the lifestyle. She worked for Iron Man Magazine as an editor for years and she wrote a column in there. And she knew the sport, especially the women. She knew every little nuance. You know, she was like the Lonnie Teeper of the women's division. And that's why I, you know, I used her a lot of times, especially later in her career when we were, the magazines really weren't as relevant anymore. She was still working for them but I would get her to do wrap ups with me of like the Olympia. I'll put a little clip up and just, I mean, R Ruth had a strong opinion on things and I, and I liked that. Even if I didn't agree with her all the time, I, I liked the fact that she was not afraid to put her opinion out there. Absolutely, I, I, she brought it. I was afraid she wasn't gonna bring it. You know, she's very involved in her business right now and you know, that kind of tends to be distracting even for a champ like ours, but she kind of dropped off the map at the end of the summer and man, she she looked good. She's got, and, it, and it, one thing that strikes me about Iris is that she's, her skin quality is so beautiful. And she knew what she was talking about. And from what I understand from my good friend Nancy Norman, who had gotten very close to her over the last couple of years, and since Ruth was kind of alone out there in California, I know Nancy visited her recently. She said that uh, Ruth's health had been kind of declining. She had a hip replacement, and she had a couple other things that went on. From what we're hearing, uh, I believe she passed from a brain bleed. And I don't know what that was caused by. If it was just several surgeries and her body was just breaking down. I think she was 77 years old. You never really get an accurate, <laughs> accurate age out of women. And you know it's not polite to ask them how old they are. And I used to ask her all the time. And she never would tell me. But I believe she was about 77 years old. And she, and she still looked really good uh, for her age. And she kept in pretty good shape. But I think her health was declining over the last couple of years. And I hadn't seen her. Well, I haven't been at the Olympia either for the last couple of years, but I don't think she was as well. I think her last Olympia might have been my last Olympia, to be honest with you. Um, she just, I guess once COVID kind of came around, she just didn't want to travel uh, and risk getting sick. But she always kept a connection to the industry because she really loved it. And I know Nancy used to say she would argue with her all the time on the phone about <laughs> who the latest and greatest in, our, in the women's sport was. And... I think her and I both did agree, however, that Iris Kyle was probably the best to ever do it in any division in the women's uh, sport with her 10 Miss Olympia titles. That was something that I know that Ruth and I both 
defended about Iris. I mean, they're, they're, everyone looked great. Most of the women at the top looked great. There were a lot of shredded women. Of course, they, they worked it out so that the champs came out last. And so Iris came out and I thought, forget it, ladies. She really brought it as usual. And uh, she looked fabulous. You know, I don't think Iris gets the credit she deserves, but she won 10 Olympia titles. And they weren't all consecutive. And that's a hard thing to do in our sport to have that kind of longevity and staying power. Dexter won a lot of great shows, but Dexter only won one Olympia. Iris won 10, and she won a lot of Arnold Classics too. And so Ruth and I always were very uh, defensive of, of that accolade of Iris's, and I know we, we shared that. And we would both go crazy when people would try to criticize Iris. But that was Ruth. She was, you know, if she was violently loyal to people, you know, if you, she liked you and she believed in you, she would defend you, you know, verbally against anyone. And I think that was something that, you know, I really admired about her. And I looked up to her. And I don't, know, I don't know if I saw her as a motherly figure because she always, you know, liked to give me advice and stuff like that if I did ask her. But she was someone I could sit around with and talk bodybuilding, but just talk life as well. And not many people have that versatility in our industry to be able to do that and connect with people. And I think that's why people like talking to her and why she got good articles out of the, you know, the people that she did interview because she was able to connect on a human level with, with everyone, whether male, female, you know, judge, you know, promoter. She, she just knew how to talk to people. And not everyone liked her, but she was so honest in her opinion that you, you had to respect her. And she's going to be missed. I miss her. I hadn't seen her really, like I said, the last couple of years. But I always enjoyed running into her at the big shows like the Arnold Classic and the Olympia and the Nationals and the USA. I mean, she was always there at every show. And so we would always, you know, sit down and have some kind of lunch or something like that together. Or we would, most of the time, we would actually sit in the audience together in the press area for hours and hours and hours. And if you know any of these shows, how long they last, I would be next to her for 15, 16 hours in a row. So at that point, if you don't have a, a connection with someone, there's nothing you could even say to anyone. But we would talk the whole time. And we would critique the girls and say who we liked, who we didn't like, who looked ridiculous, who looked great, you know, who shouldn't be on the stage. You know, it was like, like a, if anyone heard the conversations we had, they would, be, they would find them way more interesting than the podcast that I do on a regular basis. And the reason I'm telling you these stories is because I want to humanize Ruth Silverman because I think a lot of people historically in our sport don't know who she is or who, what she contributed and where she came from. And we'll do a little bit more this coming week. I'll do a little tribute video. I'm going to get, try to get some people who knew her well, like Lonnie Teeper, maybe John Balick, uh, Nancy, and uh, we can really talk about the life of Ruth Silverman. But for now, I want to just really drive home the point that I'm going to miss Ruth. I know a lot of people out there whose lives that she touched will miss Ruth as well. And I want to send my prayers and condolences out to her family in this time of loss. We love you, Ruth. We'll miss you. I know you're watching down over me and inspiring me right now. Dave Palumbo with an RX muscle news update.